I think generally the stock market is a complete waste of time and a way to lose a lot of money either very quickly or slowly and painfully over a long duration of time. However, it is still fun sometimes to look at historical stock prices and manipulate them and look at them in different ways to see if you can maybe decipher a pattern or possibly a profitable trading strategy. And in this video, I'll show you how to do that. You need three things to analyze stock data and hopefully devise a million dollar stock trading strategy. They are the stock data itself, a program that can accurately manipulate the data and apply your ideas to it, and most importantly, a brain or an imagination to think of creative ideas to apply to the data. To gather the raw stock data, I use Yahoo Finance, and I use a spreadsheet program to analyze the data and apply my strategy ideas. In this case, I'm using a free program. It's called Open Office Calc. So let's try an example. For instance, let's say I think that Apple stock, if it goes down three days in a row, then it will go up the next day and then down again the day after that. So I'll I'll write that down in my spreadsheet. If Apple, that's A-A-P-L is the symbol, goes down three days, up on the fourth day, and down on the fifth. Okay? Sounds easy enough. So our next step is to get some Apple stock data, put it in the spreadsheet, and then apply that strategy to that data set so we can see if it works in the past and if it works in the past we'll cross our fingers and hope that it works in the future. To obtain the raw stock price data I use Yahoo Finance and I enter the symbol I'm interested in in the search bar. In this case it's AA PL and I go to the left side navigation and click on historical prices and Yahoo Finance has a nifty feature if I scroll to the bottom of the screen it allows me to download the entire history of the stock into a uh, comma separated spreadsheet document so I can click on this and save it and once it's done downloading then I have the data on my computer once the data is finished downloading I can import it to my spreadsheet and there it is all of the information for Apple stock now let's apply the strategy. I'll start by making a column here and we'll call it today's movement. And this will represent the difference between the close price of the day and the open price of the day. In other words, the profit or the loss if you would have bought that stock today. So to do that, we'll do equals and we'll click the close price minus the open price and it shows that on June 5th 2012 the Apple stock moved a dollar and 56 cents up and then we'll copy this formula and then select all these cells here and paste and it warns me and I click yes so now we have all of the movement per day of Apple stock in this column in this next column we will write a formula to indicate that the stock price has gone down for the past three days 
So we'll title the column three day down. And we'll write it like this, equals and today's movement was less than zero and also yesterday's movement was less than zero and thirdly the day before that was less than zero. Oh, this one should be a semicolon. And it says false because the conditions were not met. This day and this day were both above zero. So we'll copy and paste the formula. And as you can see, there are a few instances where the conditions occur. Now that we have an indicator that lets us know when there have been three consecutive losing days for the stock, we can write a formula that keeps track of what happens on the fourth day. So we'll call this column fourth day up. And we will word it like this. Equals if the previous day was the third consecutive down day, then we will buy the stock on this day. If not, nothing. And then we'll copy and paste this down the column. And as you can see, there is some activity just uh, fairly recently. And actually, it ha happens fairly regularly that there are three consecutive down days. And predictably, we'll call the next column fifth day down. And for this one, we'll say if the day before yesterday equals true, then here's a trick, negative today's movement, because we're since we're predicting that the stock price will go down, we would be shorting it that day, so it would be we would profit if the stock goes down, so we use the negative. And then if not, zero. We'll try that one on. And as you can see here, I have some more entries. On a few of them, they overlap because on these few days, it went three days in a row, it went over three days negative. We had a bunch of days of negative. So sometimes we'll have different trades going in different directions. Like for this one, it would trigger a long trade and a short trade. So it would just, we wouldn't trade at all that day. We would just, um, we'd decide to take a rest from the market because we'd have triggers going in both directions. The next column we will title total profit and it will just be an addition of the the trades from the fourth day up and the fifth day down so we'll say equals this plus this last part is the fun part. We get to see how it performs over time. We'll call this next column accumulation. Uh, I don't know how to spell it, but accum. And we'll go all the way down to the bottom where we start and we'll say equals the previous uh, day plus today's profit or loss. 
Now this is really handy because if we copy and paste this all the way up to the top, it will show us what happens. Oh, and it looks like it does have at least a positive um, profit margin over time. Now another trick is we can do a chart. We can select the whole column and click chart and see what the see what the equity curve looks like over time and uh, we'll just finish that up there and this is what it looks like it it really goes crummy for well it's a 10 year chart so for 5 years it doesn't do anything and then for some reason it goes up and i don't know that's not something i would want to trade particularly because you can go five or six years without anything and um, this doesn't even take into account the the spread or the brokerage fees either. So I've made some changes to the spreadsheet. I've modified the total profit column to reflect a deduction of 10 cents in the event a trade was made. This is to cover transaction costs and brokerage costs and the bid ask spread. It might be more than 10 cents, it might be less. This is just an arbitrary number to make it at least a little bit more realistic. I've also done a calculation here called shares available. Basically this just shows with any given account balance how many shares you could buy with that account balance and then this column represents 50 percent of the shares so rounded because you can't buy partial shares so this just shows that with this much money I could buy six shares if I wanted to risk uh, 50 percent approximately of my account and the whole reason for both of these columns is to give an idea of if you started with a dollar amount down here, five thousand dollars, how the account would grow or shrink over time if you risked a certain portion of it throughout that whole time. So see when Apple was very cheap I could have bought 350 shares but only risking half of the account balance you would only buy um, 176 on that particular day if there was a trade to make because you don't want to risk your whole account in one day so if you want to look at the chart for the duration taking into account um, the account growth and the fees, it looks like if you started out with 5000 bucks and you traded this strategy, it would kind of wallow around a little bit and then um, you'd end up a little bit above 6000 I personally would not trade this strategy. It's way too simple because if it worked, then a million people would be using it and that would make it not work anymore. But hopefully the video has been helpful for you and thanks for watching.